YouTube, once again, it's K Stu the Goat, Kennard Vernon Stewart for Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. We're talking about uh, SEC football here on the podcast this morning. We're talking about the Georgia Bulldogs, Kirby Smart, and starting off the season with an SEC opponent. Let's get it this morning. All right, let's go ahead and get the comment section active. Let's go ahead and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. I appreciate all of college football that stops by here to hang out with the fearless and true gang and talk a little trash in the comment section war damn eagle so we're talking about kirby paul smart who you know came from some of his best work was done at alabama as a defensive coordinator got a couple of championships along the way turned out that he was sec coach of the year in 2017 when i was doing podcasting on Facebook a couple of years ago, I actually acknowledged Kirby Smart and was very congratulatory of this 2017 uh, Coach of the Year. Had a great run in 2017, beating Auburn in the SEC Championship and made an improbable run in the college football playoff. We all remember the game against Oklahoma where you know most of us felt that the season was over because of the onslaught of Baker Mayfield in the first half, but Georgia, with the heroics of Sony Michelle, won that game improbably, and then they faced Alabama, beating Alabama all over the field in the college football national championship game that year. Tua Tungavaloa comes in with the heroics to basically steal the national championship game from Georgia in 2017. Now, Fast forward to 2019, though, for the first time since Georgia's, well, first time since Kirby Smart's inauguration in 2016, where they faced North Carolina and played a pretty, you know, played a pretty decent game. But sandwiched in between the next couple of years, Georgia didn't have to have to get off the gate, get out of the gate playing a power five team for the first time since 2016. Georgia will face a not only a power five team, but will face an SEC team and most notably an SEC East team. Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt actually beat Georgia in 2016. If we all remember that play where um, Nick Chubb should have had an easy first down was stopped. On fourth down, Vanderbilt goes on to win in an upset fashion. Vanderbilt has not come close since that time, though, with even, you know, being somewhat competitive in that game. But I still think we need to note the fact that Georgia's going to have somewhat of a challenge going on the road to Vanderbilt, which can be a tricky place to play. Vanderbilt every now and then can sneak up on you and beat you. So... This game kind of reminds me of how I looked at Georgia and Missouri last year. That was almost a trap game for Georgia. Georgia did not play particularly well in the first half. Some turnovers kind of helped them out. Big shout out to Georgia's very talented secondary. But that was a dangerous game for Georgia. You're talking about a mid-afternoon game in Missouri. And you get up there and you're struggling mightily somewhat in the first half and Missouri found a way. I don't know what it is. Missouri finds a way to make the game against Georgia competitive. That's always a dangerous game uh, for the Georgia Bulldogs. Now, one thing we got to note is the fact that Georgia should get off to a fast start. Now, from what I was told, and it was brought back to my memory, that DeAndre Swift was injured. I forgot about that. He was injured last year. That's why he got kind of off to a slow start, but we'll get a chance to see early how well Georgia plays, not only on the road, but against the SEC opponent, but with a healthy DeAndre Swift, because what we feel, or at least here on Vernon Speaks for us, Auburn, what I feel is if Georgia is going to be ultimately successful, they have to do what breeds success, what, well, what has bred success for them over the last four years, at least under the Kirby Smart regime. And that's having two running backs that can combine for at least 2,000 yards because that has been ultimately successful for them. We look back to 2017, the numbers were staggering. Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle were an absolute tandem in the SEC. 
a thousand yards or plus a piece in that run to the national championship game. So if Georgia's going to be ultimately successful, we're going to be able to see early how well they play on the road and if they can get that offense going. Okay, you lose Jeremiah Holloman. Okay, that's a loss, but at the same time, that's not how Georgia wins anyway. You got enough talent at the wide receiver position to more than make up for what you lose out of Jeremiah Holloman. If anything, that'll, give, that'll allow some guys who probably weren't going to get some shine, say, until next year to go ahead and get their feet planted and start running some routes for the Georgia Bulldogs. And in this new, somewhat, I feel, will be rejuvenated offense under James Coley. All right. So let's look out for this, guys. Georgia Vanderbilt. Y'all, you know, I know, I know a lot of y'all are trying to downplay this game, but this game is very important because you right out of the gate playing an SEC East team that has beat you within the last couple of years. And, you know, of course, Derek Mason is trying to get this thing back going. So don't get caught napping in Nashville. Once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart for Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. We're talking about college football in the Deep South, where college football is king like it is nobody's business. Big shout out to all the teams in the SEC. We talk about SEC sports, probably 90 percent Auburn, though. As always, guys, over here at Vernon Speak Sports Auburn, it's always great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle.